Good morning viewers welcome to this law lecture series today's topic is doctrine of menstrua part 1st in english very soon you will have the hindi version of this lecture also here is a corrigendum or correction in the lecture 1 the date of commencement of the ipc has been wrongly mentioned please read that with the correction that the indian penal code came into force in british india with effect from 1st january 1962 kindly correct it and read it accordingly now in this lecture here is the synopsis evolutionary course of the doctrine of menstrua doctrine of menstrua has no english origin there should not be a confusion that the doctrine of menstrua has an english origin it has no english origin till the 12th century the doctrine of menstrua was totally unknown to english criminal law then the english criminal law was based on strict liability menstrua or guilty state of mind was regarded as something irrelevant to constitute a crime if my act if my act is against criminal law i am held liable invariably i did not intend to do that act i had no knowledge about that act no intention or knowledge or state of mind was regarded as something totally irrelevant the liability of the accused was supposed to be strict if he did anything whether knowingly or not knowingly intentionally or unintentionally having reason to believe or having no reason to believe he was to be made liable absolutely so english criminal law began with strict liability regarding menstrua as something irrelevant english law was very irrational at that time since menstrua was attached no importance so even the beasts animals or inanimate objects they were subjected to criminal trial say if a horse kicked me then that horse was regarded as an accused and it was subjected to criminal trial you may be surprised to hear all this but that was true the horse was tried criminally an advocate was also assigned to horse to defend itself in the criminal trial law was so irrational it was really ridiculous to summarize this you have to say that doctrine of menstrua has no english origin english criminal law was based on strict liability state of mind a guilty state of mind was taken to be wholly irrelevant even animals beasts and inanimate objects were surprisingly subjected to criminal trials now come here concept of dolus and kalpa concept of dolus and kalpa it is referable to roman law the concept of dolus and kalpa as it was 
understood under the Roman law influenced the English law. Dolus here means wrongful act or an act or omission forbidden by criminal law. Kalpa here means mensria or guilty state of mind. So the concept of dolus and kalpa influenced irrational English law. In the 13th century, it was recognized under English law that absence of kalpa, absence of mensria, or absence of guilty state of mind is a defense. For the first time in the 13th century English law, mensria was recognized as an essential ingredient of an offense. Now, the mensria was accepted, recognized as a defense to criminal liability. So English law now, now forwarded on the path of rationality. This is 13th century. 12th century English law did not recognize mensria as an ingredient of an offense. Dolus and Kalpa, the idea, came from Roman law and it had its influence on English law. The 13th century English law accepted, recognized mensria as a defense. Now, 15th century English law. By the 15th century, under English law, mensria was fully recognized as a defense to criminal liability. It was accepted, it was recognized that no mensria, no liability. No mensria, no liability was finally recognized under English law. But it was too late. It was only in 15th century. With such a change in outlook, with such a change in the philosophy of law, the animals, beasts, and inanimate objects were absorbed of criminal trial. How can an animal or beast or an inanimate object have mensria? They can't hold mensria. They cannot possess mensria. So now they were absolved of criminal trial. Rationality, thereby rationality, element of rationality was introduced in English law. Now, elements of doctrine of mensria. Elements of doctrine of mensria. You see the Latin maxim, actus facit riam, nisi mensit ria. Actus facit riam, nisi mensit ria. This is a Latin maxim and it enshrines the general doctrine of mensria. What does the maxim mean? It suggests that concurrence of actus reus and mensria, concurrence of actus reus and mensria constituted criminal liability. No criminal liability can arise unless and until the actus reus and mensria combined. Actus reus plus mensria together constitute an offense, create a criminal liability. This is the this is the basic sense, basic meaning enshrined in this Latin maxim. Now, 
टू थिंग्स आर देयर टू क्रिएट क्रिमिनल लाइबिलिटी एक्टस रियस एंड सेकेंड मैंस रिया नाउ वॉट इज एक्टस रियस एक्टस रियस मीन्स एन एक्ट और ओमिशन फॉबिडन बाई क्रिमिनल लॉ समथिंग प्रोहिबिटेड समथिंग फॉरबिडन बाई क्रिमिनल लॉ इज कॉल्ड मे बी कॉल्ड एक्टस रियस एक्ट सीरियस मीन्स एक्ट और ओमिशन फॉबिडन बाय क्रिमिनल लॉ मेन्सरिया मेन्सरिया मीन्स गिल्टी स्टेट ऑफ माइंड मिस्चीवस माइंड इट मे बी क्रिमिनल इंटेंशन इट मे बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्रिमिनल नॉलेज इट मे बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रीजन टू बिलीव सो एक्ट सीरियस मीन्स Act or omission forbidden by criminal law. Mens rea means guilty state of mind, criminal intention, criminal knowledge, or reason to believe. Actus reas and mens rea, when combined, criminal liability results. This we call doctrine of mens rea. Next in the next lectures. Thank you. very much